Hey Waffle Gang, I do hope you are well. My name is Mark and today we're checking out some more Reddit stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting that like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. And let's crack on with today's first story. Much love guys. Now today's first story comes from Alexis Drake 1354 and says my female 22 boyfriend male 26 asked me for $1,500 to buy a Halloween costume. Me, female 22, and my boyfriend, male 26, have been together for around four years. I recently was asked by him if he could get a personal loan under my name so that he could buy a Halloween costume. I'm feeling a bit unsure of how upset I should be or if I even should be upset about it. To explain his current situation, he currently has around $5,000 worth of debt and does not have a job and lives off of payments from the government currently. When he originally asked, I got quite upset since for the last year, his financial situation has continued to get worse as I currently pay for his groceries and essentials and without aid, doesn't have basic essentials like toilet paper or soap, let alone food and can only meet the payments of his rent at the moment. When he asked me for the loan, it was about $1,500 and he wanted to have me open a personal loan since no financial lenders would give him any more money than he currently has on loan. I don't know why I felt like it was my breaking point, but I just cried and told him he was childish for asking me for money to buy something so stupid and I haven't spoken to him for the last couple of days. He asked me for money when he already relies on me to buy his groceries and is in so much debt from buying video games and action figures. I'm struggling to figure out what even to do or say to him. The reason he wants to loan so much from me is for more of the same non-essential things that got him into debt in the first place. A custom-made Halloween costume seems like an outrageous thing to want to purchase in his current situation, but he doesn't see it as a big deal since in his words, it's not a lot of money for you. And I think I just need advice on what approach might work to help him understand. No matter how much I have tried to explain the strain his dependence on me with his basic needs has been, when we don't live together and despite me trying to suggest loan consolidation or a selected person to manage his funds on his behalf could benefit him. I feel like my approach isn't working. I'd appreciate advice on what steps I can take or what approach I might be able to use instead in regards to talking to him and trying to resolve the issue in our relationship currently. Now, obviously, I know the title says it's about the Halloween costume, but it's far more than that. It's about his funds and his financials, which in the end is a huge part of a relationship and making it work for the both of you and I think you really need to consider the future of this and what's going to happen. You know, you said that you've tried talking to him to have someone in charge of his finances, loan consolidations, you know, steps to get himself out of debt rather than adding more debt. And at this point, he's trying to get you into debt at the same time. And if he's unable to step back and see how ridiculous that sounds, then, then I think you really need to question if this is the relationship for you, because it doesn't sound the way you've explained it like he's going to change. And you want this for your future, your future. Yes, you've invested four years into this relationship, but has it always been like this? Has there been signs in the past? But cultural shape says, tell him it's not a lot of money for you because you would never in a million years even contemplate something as foolhardy as taking out a four figure loan for a holiday that's A, months away and B, can be celebrated just as if not more effectively with an old bedsheet and a pair of scissors. Or no, just no works. Or simply laugh as you walk away. Hopefully for good, because I don't know why you're trying to convince yourself this is reasonable unless you want to spend the rest of your life in debt, catering to an overgrown five-year-old's every whim. Opie responded saying, I think I'm struggling in rationalizing it because my boyfriend has already invested about $700 into the costume and has been stressing and non-stop talking to me about showing me pictures of what costume he wants and cried to me over the phone about how he always wanted to dress up in this costume since he was a child. He has never mentioned this character or costume to me since we've been together. He stressed how life-changing this costume was, that he told me I would happily starve for weeks if it means I have this costume, which I really don't want to have him do. So he's going down manipulation as well. Reality Junkie replies that saying he hasn't invested $700, he has spent $700 he does not have. This is hugely disturbing behavior. If he starves for weeks because of this costume, he wins a Darwin Award. Why are you still dating this idiot? OP clarifies what the costume is and says it's a Spider-Man costume with like ridged webbing and it's screen accurate to the amazing Spider-Man costume from the movies. 
And then the top comment on this post says, lol, girl, come on. Have some respect for yourself. This man is already a clown. He doesn't need any costume. <laughs> Ooh, spicy. And I got no doubt that a Spider-Man costume that screen accurate like that will run into that kind of money. But this is for Halloween. I may imagine lots of people will think it will is cool for a certain amount of time. But then afterwards, you've just spent on a one-time outfit unless he's going to be wearing it every day. I mean, he may do, but... <laughs> But like that commenter said, he didn't invest $700, he spent it. And he's spending that money when you're already subsidizing his living already. So come on now, he's just taking the piss. So the update says, I'm sure most of you thought this was a dumb question to begin with and, and really tore through me. But for those who were kinder with their advice, I really appreciated it along with the private messages that offered kinder words. I know I seem like an absolute idiot, but I think being with my boyfriend for so long, as well as since high school, made me feel extremely attached and like I wouldn't know what to do if he wasn't around. So in that way, I was definitely dependent on him. To clarify things, it was for a Spider-Man costume. And no, I did not give him the money. I spoke to him and he tried explaining that it was his cousin who forced him to ask me for the money. Which I didn't believe and ended the relationship since a lot of your comments made me realize I have a seriously low standard for my dating pool will have to reconsider my standards moving forward. I guess the reason I indulged this man for so long was because I felt pity for him in his situation. He lives off government disability payments due to having autism, ADHD, and severe clinical depression. And I think as we progressed in our relationship, I slowly became his carer after his family moved away and had no one to take him to his appointments. Especially after COVID, his carer quit, so he didn't have someone to help him in his day-to-day -day tasks. I understand now that should have never been my job to pick up and blurring those lines made me become financially and emotionally used as he had someone else to depend on. Anyways, I've broken up with my boyfriend. I will try to listen to you guys and find someone who is more on my level of stability and self-reliance. Thank you everyone for listening and giving me the wake-up call I needed to get out before I committed to marrying or having children with him. It's a shame that some comments were not so kind with OP in regards to this question because I think when you have been with someone and like OP said it was their first relationship and we see once again that things become normalized that it's hard to, to recognize what's going on around you. You know, this is your everyday life. You're doing your normal day-to-day -day tasks in between all these things. So as well as dealing with complicated feelings and guilt and potential manipulation in the background as well it can be incredibly difficult but i think good for op in this situation i think she's going to realize that a whole load of weight has just been lifted off her shoulders it probably takes some time for sure but like we always say the, the gray cloud lifts around her and she can see a lot further now but what do you guys make of this situation let us know your thoughts down in the comments below and let's move on to another story now, our next story comes from Cold Coffee 1979 and says, Should I, 45 male, let my ex-wife, 45 female, move in with me after our divorce? This is a throwaway account. Too much personal stuff on my main. All names are fake, of course. I'm a 45-year-old man, divorced with one daughter, Lily, 18. My ex-wife, Thelma, also 45-year-old, and I split two years ago, after 20 years of marriage. I will admit that I was not, am not, nor will I ever be perfect. I do like to think I was a good husband and am a good father. While married, I did my best. Trying to keep up with the majority of the housework, 60-40 split on that with me doing the most, while working 40-50 to 50 hours per week. I tried to be attentive and caring, never forgetting anniversaries, birthdays and so on. I did let my body go a bit as the years went by. And I admit that I'm not the most exciting guy in the world. Still... I listened to my wife and did what I thought she wanted or needed to keep our marriage happy. Thelma seemed happy with me and bragged to her friend saying I was a good husband. I suppose that was a lie. As Thelma decided she wanted to get railed by some 30 year old guy she met at her job. When I caught Thelma, I did not try a pick me dance suggesting therapy or any of that. I opted to divorce, pressing a cordial termination of our marriage. For the sake of our daughter, I remained civil and calm. Thelma was angry that I did not fight to save the marriage, but agreed to a peaceful split. The divorce was quick and Thelma left with 75% of our savings and a car. I kept our house, my old truck, 25% of our savings and assumed all debt. Custody was 50-50. Our daughter decided to stay with me, with her mother getting visitation. 
Lily, while still underage, was free to visit her mother whenever. I'm very proud of my girl and knows she can make good informed decisions on her own. Thelma moved into an apartment with her affair partner, Larry. That was about two years ago. Since then, I have lost extra weight, I put on 30 pounds, and have dated some. Nothing serious, as I have no desire to ever marry again. Once bitten, twice shy, and all that. That brings us to this week. Last night, I got a call from Lily that Thelma was in the emergency room a couple of days ago. From what I've been told, after our divorce, Larry began to show his true nature, starting with verbal and emotional abuse. Several weeks ago, it turned physical. Tuesday, Larry went further than slaps, seriously hurting Thelma. Without going into details of her injuries, it was enough for the ER to keep Thelma overnight and for charges to be pressed on Larry, even if Thelma didn't ask. Thelma has nowhere to go, and her funds are all but gone due to her spending since our divorce. The apartment she was in is in Larry's name, so she cannot go back there. She's currently staying in a cheap hotel room, but will have to leave in the next couple of days due to lack of money. Her father passed six years ago and her mother is in an assisted living home. Her sister lives 600 miles away and Thelma cannot move due to her job. She has no close friends that can take her in. Her daughter lives in a dorm, so Lily cannot let Thelma stay there. Unless she can find someone willing to take her in soon, Thelma will be homeless or in a shelter. Lily called me to ask if I'd be willing to let Thelma stay with me until Thelma is able to find an apartment or somewhere to go. I am literally the last hope Thelma has. Now to my problem. Should I open my home to let Thelma back in? I'm not so cold-hearted as to enjoy Thelma's situation. I'm closer to apathy, to be honest. Part of me wants to simply shrug and say, not my monkey, not my circus. Still, I know how bad Lily would hurt to see her mother suffering and on the street. I've talked to friends and family, with answers ranging from, you have room, so move her in, to pay for her first month and deposit on an apartment, to screw her and her ugly tattoo. There was one friend of mine that said, move her in and make her pay with booty, but he is the dumbass friend we all ignore. I'm going to go ahead and try to head off what I'm guessing will be questions people may ask. Thelma may have cheated, but she is a good mother. Thelma is not a narc or evil person. She is a human that did something selfish and stupid. I've forgiven her, but have not forgotten. There is zero chance that I end up back with Thelma. That ship sailed, ran into an iceberg, burst into flames, and was then attacked by a mechanical megalodon before it sank. Thelma has wanted to escape Larry for a long time. It did not have a chance until he was arrested. He's currently sitting in lockup, unable to post bail. She's getting some sort of protective order. I have no idea if they still work together. Four hour edit. Thanks to all for your reply so far. I will be meeting Thelma soon as the shift ends. We're going to Waffle House, and this will be the first real conversation I had with her in over a year. I kept contact to text only and focused on Lily until now. I'm also working on an option that will keep her from being homeless, but keep her out of my house. One other point, some comments have assumed negative characteristics of Thelma that are not true. I do not hate this woman. I do not care for her as once I did, but I do not hate her. She's an excellent mother and as aside from her affair, she was a good wife. Still, infidelity is not something I can have in my relationship, so I divorced her. My daughter understands and supports my decision to never rekindle my romance with Thelma. My sole goal is my daughter's well-being and for that, nothing is off the table. Salacious Pickle says, if you let her live with you, it should be as a tenant and nothing more. She should pay something for rent, even if it's only $10 a month, and you should have a signed lease agreement. That way, if you need to, it might be easier to evict her. Mokta says, dude, I made this mistake with my ex. I did it for my kid, but it was miserable until she finally moved out eight months later. Only do this as a last resort. Opie says, yeah, this is the last resort, kind of a break glass in case of fire situation. Thankfully, I may have an option I didn't think of until I talked to my uncle an hour ago. Now, I like Opie's thinking in this. People may say doormat or whatever, but I understand where he's coming from for the benefit of his daughter's health and well-being and her worrying, etc. That he's trying to come up with options. Do I think moving in with you is a good option? Absolutely not. I don't think that's a good idea at all and not something that I would personally consider. Would I potentially come up with ways to discuss and try to find different options for her? Like doing a bit of research and finding alternate ways. I know she could probably do this, but two minds are better than one. Would I do that on for the benefit of my daughter? 
Yes, probably. But a couple of weeks later, OP comes back into the post and says, years ago, my father bought a house for his younger brother, who has dealt with mental and physical issues his entire life. My father in his later years added my name to the deed to help ensure someone could keep a roof over my uncle's head. Now that my uncle is getting older and has retired, wants to move in with his sister and live a basement apartment at her house that will be perfect for him. The initial plan was for us to sell the house and give half the sale price to my uncle. Plans change. It cost me quite a bit, but I bought out my uncle's half of the property, removing him from the deed. Added Lily, my daughter, as the owner to the property, which now has my name and hers. Thelma signed a rental agreement and has moved in there, paying a small amount of rent. This takes care of Thelma's living situation, keeps her out of my house and sets up Lily for the future with a place of her own, should she ever need one. Lily is extremely happy with this setup, knowing her mum is safe and has a place to live. The rent is little, far lower than market, but it covers insurance and other upkeep. Thelma is using her employer's assistance program for some therapy visits to deal with some mental health issues after living with Larry. I'm 100% sure she is over him and will not be welcome in her life. Over the past two weeks, I've seen Thelma is a changed woman. I don't quite know how to word it, but she seems more thankful for what she has and less impulsive. More than anything, she seems focused on trying to fix her life. That leaves me. My kid is happy and I got her primed for a good life. Yes, it cost, but it was just money. If it means I have to work a few more years, so be it. In the end, it will be worth to give my princess the best launch into the world I can give her. A few days ago, I was in a minor accident, leaving me a little banged up. Thelma came over to cook for me and we talked for quite a while. We discussed where we're at in our lives and so on. She is still a beautiful woman inside and out. I know people are quick to condemn cheaters, to be branded with scarlet letters and to be beyond forgiveness. Granted, there are some terrible people out there that revel in infidelity. Thelma is not one of them. She's a good person that did something very, very selfish and stupid. She has paid for it. Both Lily and I have forgiven her. Time to move on. I had a question about what happens if Thelma starts dating again. Well, so what? She's not my wife anymore. We're not in any sort of committed relationship. She is free to date or not as she desires. As far as me and Thelma getting back together, the answer is no. Or never marry again. Anyone, for any reason. I'm burned on the concept and will not bind myself to someone that way. I really don't think I want to be in a committed relationship either. No, I'm not bitter. I'm happy for the friends and family that I have in marriages and the like, but I cannot bring myself to get in that sort of situation again. At best, I may date casually or have a friends with benefits situation should the opportunity arise. Otherwise, I am solo. Efficiency Forsaken says on the back of this one, I'm very glad you're able to find a solution that works for all parties involved. Leecher Blonde says, you're a very good man, very good. I'm glad everything worked out. You're a true good example for your daughter. The Silent Observer says, you sound like a very fair, level-headed man. I'm glad you found a way to keep all parties safe, happy and comfortable. Your daughter is blessed and your ex is lucky and probably kicking herself for her past choices. I'm not sure how I actually feel about the update, if I'm being honest, with her moving into what is now her daughter's place and OP's name is on it, of course. I think it just sets up for future issues. At some point in the future, daughter's gonna want to move into that place, I assume, or do something with it. And mum's gonna be already established in there. Is she gonna wanna move out? Whilst OP says she's a good mum, she's also exhibited selfish behavior in the past. What happens if she gets a new partner, gets married again? Is the partner gonna be moving in there with her? It kind of just felt to me like this is set up for a whole bunch of different issues going forward. In the first part of the post, I was all up for like discussing or researching to try and find a way, maybe some sort of support systems that maybe that you may be able to find in your local area or something like that. But I think allowing her to move into a house that you bought into, I think it's just, uh, it just feels like there might be other issues. Maybe I'm completely wrong on that. I really don't know. It left me really conflicted. But now... I'm going to turn this one to you guys. What do you guys make of this situation? How would you have dealt with it? Do you think that ending was a potentially good one? Do you think it will work for all parties involved? Do you think there might be other issues in the future? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below.
Now, just a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart for getting involved in today's stories. Your love, your support, your time always means the absolute world to me. So thank you so, so much. And if you do want to see some more stories, don't forget at the very end of the video, there'll be a couple of playlists there that you can click on. They will automatically scroll through all the videos for you. Thank you so, so much. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Take care and much love. Yeah, man, I remember being so naive when life was good, weather and palm trees. Back in the day, you were everything I need. But then along came a time when you crushed my dreams. Oh, yeah, you played me like a fool when you made me believe that the line between love wasn't thick enough to read. Oh, yeah, you see, we in despair, crime everywhere. You're selling false hope because you just don't care. Nah, uh, you just don't care. Nah, 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 you just don't, just don't care uh, You just don't, still selling false hope Cause you just don't care House, 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 feel, feel If we talking to a uniform 